Right and true deck he's been sticking with for a while. Giratina V-Star paired with this Lost Zone engine. Well, Nathan, who is someone who has also played a lot of Lost Zone recently, has now, with the rotation, shifted over to playing a control archetype thanks to that powerful quick search ability. Yeah, quick search and also that Hero's Cape A spec as well. I think uh, another huge uh, part that we haven't talked about as much, but it's a really, really uh, big boon for these control decks, of course, uh, giving any Pokemon that you attach it to 100 extra HP, which makes uh, some Pokemon so hard to deal with in terms of knocking out. Yeah, this is going to be a very interesting matchup. Now, typically this Lost Zone Garatina deck has a lot of strong options and answers against Nathan. I mean, Nathan's playing a very interesting list. We're going to have lots of time to talk about this. Uh, is there really anything that sticks out to you when comparing both of these players' lists, the cards they have, some of the options at their disposal? I, I, mean, I mean, just uh, looking through now, I mean, it's... I mean, the control lists are always a fascinating to look at just because there's so many sort of different sort of text, different approaches you can take to control. But Nathan is really going for this approach where he essentially wants to create some just big, big Pokemon that can't be knocked out. And I think the main thing that's going to come into play here is that Wigglytuff EX, which he is in fact playing with that, that ability that does give it an extra 100 HP if it has a special energy attached. And so it can uh, get itself up to 350 HP, which is an absurd number, quite frankly. It is a lot that... Quickly tough, 250 base and then 100 more HP if it has that special energy. And that's a big number. Hey, listen, Garatina V-Star dealing 280, that's still hey, yep. not enough to take a one-hit knockout. So maybe that's a card that Nathan is thinking about. And that MVP for Isaiah, definitely a bis seek Garatina V. Build that loss zone up. Lots to talk about. I mean, this is a matchup that could go either way. There's draws, there's cards that could definitely impact things. So we'll have to see how these players play it out. And more importantly, how their setup and starts look. Yeah, it's going to be absolutely, absolutely key here, and uh, yeah, the support accounts as well. It's, it's going to be Nathan trying to you know, use uh, users like Rotom V, the Minion V, to try and find as many of these support accounts as possible to you know, do this healing and just deny knockouts over and over again. This is going to be the absolute key thing here for Nathan, as we do see a few of those already in the prizes, including, oh, that Chi Yu option, of course, in there, just to you know, get a little bit of end game discard there, just to you know, win the game a little bit more quickly by sending the opponent's cards from the deck to the discard pile, but currently in the prizes. Yeah, that can be accessed, but that is a big problem a lot of people have sort of noted with this control deck is you don't have a lot of ways to take prize cards unless you decide to get aggressive, and there's some matchups where you don't want to get aggressive. I think this is a matchup where Nathan knows that he's going to have to eventually string some attacks together. It does have that Radiant Charizard. That is a super powerful card. Lots to talk about, lots to get into, but here we are. Swiss round number 11, and Isaiah, a big thing to note, starting that Giratina V, that's going to make it a little bit harder for Nathan to maybe try and trap some in the active spot. Yeah, Garrett's gonna be pretty much an ideal starter for Isaiah, but also ideal from Nathan's side, does start with that Hisuian Heavy Ball. So he can look for the prizes and just fish out that Shiyu straight away, uh, which I'm sure will be nice for him to just uh, have in the back pocket, just to you know, maybe try and get rid of a few of Isaiah's resources and uh, uh, try to win the game. Yeah, he's just gonna write down the prize cards. It's a great tool, not only to grab these basic Pokemon out of your prizes, but to also just not have to prize check. Just get that prize knowledge, make sure you are 100% certain of what cards are unavailable at the time being. However, Nathan starting that Radiant Charizard is a little bit frustrating. It does have that Excited Heart ability, but Isaiah is not in a position where he necessarily wants to rush in and take prize card. Nathan has a lot of cards he can utilize once the game progresses, once these Garatina V and V-Stars start taking knockouts. And it does have a hefty three retreat cost, so it can be a little bit annoying to pivot out. Yeah, very, very... Uh... Not ideal to start with it. Definitely something you want to you know, bring in maybe sort of like later on just to do a threat that you can't really like stall or just to knock something out. But in the meantime, just going to be sitting there a little bit. Does find that Pidgey turn one, which is a very important find. Going to want to get that Pidgey as soon as possible to find the exact right sort of card to disrupt on any given turn. But after that, just going to pass it over to Isaiah. And uh, with that Giratina V start, uh, going to be feeling pretty good about things. Going to start, as you mentioned earlier, even going for the earlier Abyss Deakings. Just start to build up the hand and uh, just try and sort of take it from there. Yeah, and this makes me wonder here with sort of how Nathan didn't use anything like Instant Charge and just has this Pidgey. I mean, that is the key part of the deck, right? This Pidgeot EX. Is this a matchup maybe where Isaiah understands that Nathan's win condition is probably not going to be to trap a Pokemon in the active spot? Does Isaiah get aggressive and maybe go for a Cramorant or maybe go for one of these tech Pokemon in the deck that's 2-2 two, two Banette line. Of course, having the ability to use that Everlasting Darkness and Item Lock, Nathan. And Nathan plays a lot of powerful item cards in his deck. Yeah, at that point, Nathan has said we have to be relying on supporters instead. And you know, and I think another important thing to mention, if uh, Isaiah can get that up early enough before Nathan can find a wreck handy, there is no Pidgeotto in this deck. So that will actually deny yeah. Nathan access to Pidgeot entirely. Yeah, would have to somehow knock out that Pidgeotto. Uh, 
excuse me, the Bonnet EX. It's yeah. a card I'm not necessarily used to saying, and I mean, it's got a lot of useful uh, positions that you can use it in. Of course, it also has the Bonnet that has the ability to just throw itself in the Lost Zone and get yourself a supporter card back. So we'll have to see how Isaiah decides to play this matchup out, but it is just going to be the Comfe first, so maybe Isaiah just wants to potentially go after this Pidgeot, but it would take a lot of resources to go after this. I'm not sure it's necessarily worth the investment. Of course, that that's, uh, a spec of choice is that Prime Catcher, this Garatina deck, has the ability to play that over Maximum Bell that's sort of become the norm throughout this weekend. We are going to see Comfe go down, so Isaiah is more than willing to put these Pokémon into play. Yeah, and you, you want to get one company down because, of course, although the Abyss Seeking is great for her to sure build up your hand, you want to try and build up your hand a little bit more quickly than that, and you want to build up your Lost Zone a little bit more quickly than that. So just you know, putting down there the option of the Comfe from the Nest Ball does have a Chorus Experiment as well for good measure. So really off to a great start here in terms of finding more resources. It means you can see what he finds off of this Chorus Experiment. You see, oh, a few things. That, there is a Buddy Buddy Poffin. Yeah, uh, it does find one things. of those Temple of Sinnoh. Oh, that yes. could be a pretty solid card in this case. Nathan is playing one of those Mist Energy in his deck, and Star Requiem could be the best way to deal with something like a Wigglytuff. You see Isaiah prioritizing keeping that card. He has a feeling that card is going to be useful later on in the game. Yes, and uh, getting rid of that Buddy Buddy Puffin, because of course, was able to find the Shuppet already, has it in hand, puts it down on the bench, and yeah, that uh, Bayonet is going to be absolutely vital for Isaiah. Does find another Giratina too, for good measure, and uh, with the attachment to the active, going to finish off with an Abyss Seeking, and already up to four in the Lost Zone. Yeah, there was a play, potentially, if Isaiah had a switching card, he could go for a very risky uh, enveloping Shadow Attack. Oh. If he flips heads, he could stop item cards from Nathan, and then the following turn, guarantee it, if he can find a Bonnet, but it's just going to be attaching to the Giratina, using this Abyss Seeking, and Nathan does have that Arvin in hand, and Isaiah did not bench anything like a, a, a Spirit Tomb. He's actually not playing the Spirit Tomb in the deck. I mean, that is a very useful card in situations where your opponent wants to, in the early game with this deck, just use that instant charge ability lots and lots of times to build up the hand. And not only that as well, Nathan did in fact draw the Pidgeot EX for turn. Absolutely phenomenal draw as now Nathan can just search for the rare candy and that Pidgeot would be good to go. And Isaiah's kind of like missed the chance to deny Nathan that Pidgeot. Yeah, nothing like Devolution in this deck. There's no way to stop that Pidgeot unless you can find a way to knock it out. And Isaiah, nodding his head, understands this is what's happening. And this is really not something you expect a lot with this control deck. Turn two, going first, rare candy Pidgeot. Nathan has his support line set up and is going to unlock tons of doors for him here in this position. Yeah, it's a phenomenal position for, for Nathan to be in. Is now 1%, he will be able to search for you know, any card that he pleases. Of course, we won't, won't be able to search for any disruption supporters at this turn, given that you know you just have to use the oven to find the rare candy, but really not going to be minding that, given the, how well he's set up now with this uh, Pidgeot ready to go. So we can use that Pidgeot. Quick search ability, we could see something like the Rotom V potentially come down. That way you can just draw some more cards to end the turn off, and I think that's a pretty easy choice here for Nathan. <laughs> <laughs> Just double checking everything, making sure. Yeah, you didn't prize the Rotom, right? Nope. It's in the deck. It's right here. And Nathan, off to a very excellent start. This is what you want to see as the control player. Lots of times, if you give Giratina lots of time to set up and you are not building your board up as well, you can sort of get overrun later on. And we are actually also going to see that Bravery Charm come down Ooh. onto the Radiant Charizard. Okay. So that will push it to 210 HP. Doesn't really mess up too many numbers, but you're eventually going to probably want to play something like Penny to pick it up out of the active spot, so you might not just put that down and guarantee it maybe has a little bit more survivability. Yeah, so instant charge gets uh, fired off. Three more cards in hand for Nathan. Over to Isaiah, who with four in the Lost Zone already is not quite there in terms of being able to you know, use a Mirage Gate, for example, but could maybe get there with a combination of Chorus Experiment plus that one comfort that's on the bench. And uh, if Isaiah can find some way to get an easy early knockout on this Pidgeot, that would be really great, but I don't know if he has the means to put it together this turn. It's hard because putting Kramer in into play is just opening for potentially it to just get stuck or it gets walled out by things like Wiggly. There's just a lot of issues that Kramer has to be benched in this matchup. You'd rather be using other Pokemon to play, and this is a very easy choice and a nice find here for Isaiah. Binds two of those Pokemon he does not want in play. The Radiant Greninja could potentially be trapped by a tempting trap throughout the game if Isaiah runs out of things like those Jet Energy or the switching item cards that he plays. Just taking a look to see if there's something like a Erica's Invitation in this deck for Nathan. You've got to really look and see all the options because Doesn't things like that it, are no. super important. Uh, so Nathan is very, very much set on just dealing with the Pokemon in play, not trying to maybe get a little bit lucky or I guess cheeky. I'm in, I'm in <laughs> London, right? So I might as well be uh, using some, some lingo, some British lingo. Uh, we 
Argos actually going to see the Banet evolved. Does have that ability allowing it to put itself into the loss zone. So Isaiah really not prioritizing going for item block at this point. Is instead just going to give himself a little bit more consistency. And it's always something that can never be trapped because no matter where it is, it can send itself to the loss zone and you can just promote a new Pokemon. Yeah, I, I guess in this instance, right, given that he missed the chance to find the rare candy, maybe as I was thinking, you know what, at this point he's made it a support I'm worried about, so I may as well evolve to shove it into the supporter bin instead, and uh, maybe I can use that to get back a resource at a crucial time, or as you mentioned, just make it so that it can't be stalled. So we finally see enough cards in the law zone, thanks to this flower selecting to use that Mirage Gate. So Colrus twice, uh, of course the Abyss Seeking, and then the one flower selecting, and... This is actually a pretty smart choice to Bravery Charm this Charizard. Otherwise, it would have been knocked out by the Shred attack oh, on this yeah, Giratina right. Yeah, I mean, uh, Shred does uh, ignore the any effects on the defending Pokemon, but of course you can't you know, ignore the effect of just having more HP, so uh, not going to be able to take a knockout uh, on that Charizard with that Bravery Charm keeping it in play. So the question here for Isaiah, are we just going to see this Comfey pivot out of the active spot? And we are. Garatina V comes up. I don't think it's really worth doing a lost impact. And yeah, very smart choice for Nathan to put that bravery charm there. We're actually just going to see an abyss seeking. And I think Isaiah understands, yes, Shred would be great. I need to definitely attack at some point. But if I attack into this Radiant Charizard, it's just going to be pennied out. Pidgeot can guarantee that it's searched, and this becomes tough. Yeah, and uh, yeah, with this uh, Bravery Charm in play, uh, Isaiah does not play Lost Vacuum, so maybe there could have been an argument to go for the Shred if you could, you know, maybe in, like, Nathan misses the Penny, and then you can just like Lost Vacuum take another KO. But knowing that there is no Lost Vacuum option, no reason to take to do the damage here. So yeah, just going to go for the Abyss Seeking instead. So Nathan starting the turn off with Ultra Ball. You can really see now, if you've never watched this control deck function, this is going to be it playing at its maximum capacity. Now that Pidgeot is set up, not only can you, if you'd like to, instant charge to end your turn off, we see that with the Snorlax deck, but also grab a card every single turn. And this Pidgeot allows you to do things like attack and get these Pokemon to play. And here it is, the Jigglypuff coming into here play, singing its song and getting ready to evolve and power up into that Wigglytuff EX. Yeah, the, the really, really tough DX, the absolute tank of a Pokemon, especially once you put that special energy on it. And as you already mentioned, even with that mist energy as well, invulnerable to a Giratina V-Star Star Requiem. So no option to really knock it out one hit at all as long as uh, that mist energy is on it. Of course, we talked about that Temple of Sinnoh, though. Oh, and that oh, no, is going to be true. the card that Isaiah is holding on to. It's always important to note the control, control in quotations, cards that are in the format. So as it stands currently in the Pokemon TCG standard format, there is no way to discard stadium cards directly. You can use something like Chi Yu's attack to mill the deck, and if there's a stadium in the top two cards, it will be discarded, but otherwise, Isaiah can kind of just hold on to this Temple of Sinnoh, wait to play it until it's necessary, and really get value out of it. Yeah, and this is a one way in which the rotation of Sydney was very, very impactful, mm -hmm. of course. That was a control card that did allow you to discard, uh, I believe it was uh, special energies and stadiums in the opponent's hand, but that card is now gone, so that is not an option for control. So stadiums, as you mentioned, very safe to be to stay in the hand. Nathan do, does play Iono as the supporter card, so the hand that Isaiah has been building up with multiple Colrus's experiment, Abyss Seeking, that will go to the bottom of the deck, and looks like Nathan is more than content to just use this instant charge. I think was really looking to find an energy card there off of that Iono. Of course, that Wigglytuff EX does have the attack that does 90 damage plus 90 more if you play a supporter card, and that is for three colorless energy, so with any energy plus a double turbo energy, you can fulfill that attack requirement. So Isaiah will start his turn off. It does still have that Banet in play, so at any point you can just find a supporter card from your discard pile, but look at that. Isaiah finding another Colrus experiment. This Ooh. is Colrus number three hitting the discard pile. Isaiah will now be over the 10 card threshold, so Star Requiem will be an option. And uh, yeah, that's a uh, very, very tiny there from uh, Isaiah. Now he passed that sort of that 10 in Lost Zone Chris Corbass, as it were, because now you have access to uh, Lost Mine, you have access to Star Requiem, you can do Pretty much uh, every, anything that your your loss of deck can do, you can reach now for here. Uh, we do see the caution experiment, uh, Buddy Buddy Puffin going away, and then an interesting choice between the rest here. It's really tough. It's, it's Garatina V Star Roxanne. Now, normally Roxanne is a card you throw away, but Isaiah understands that Nathan is probably going to try and get in there with that Wigglytuff, and eventually, if Nathan takes prizes, then Isaiah could maybe put together a play where he disrupts the hand, maybe takes a knockout on that Pidgeot EX, and all of a sudden, Nathan's deck starts to crumble in terms of consistency. Yeah, exactly. This is like one of the few control archetypes where. They, they, 
keeping your own disruption cards can actually be relevant. But we do see that the Prime Catcher bringing up that uh, pitch, pitch out EX, and as long as uh, Nathan can find, oh, as long as Isaiah can find a Garrett in a V Star, he will be able to knock it out and now deny Nathan further quick searches. And there it is. Yeah, did keep that Garatina V Star off the Colrus's experiment. And I think Isaiah has the right idea about this matchup. Target Pidgeot as quickly as possible, shut down this consistency option, and this lost impact doing just enough damage to take the knockout on Pidgeot EX. And Isaiah will take the prize lead, even benching Sableye too, so that lost mine is an option, and playing out this hand so that all these Pokemon are powered up. Yeah, really, really phenomenal turn from Isaiah, doing exactly what he needs to do to just try and you know, counteract it. It's to be stop, to stop Nathan from getting to the point where he has like this big 350 HP Pokemon that just you know cannot be knocked out by anything that Isaiah has. So yeah, very, very smart heads up play there, and loading up um, more energy as well. Or is that oh, okay? I was gonna say it was, if that was from hand, but no, that was a Mirage Gate, so that's okay. <laughs> yeah, Isaiah did prize three energy, so was only able to get that one Grass energy, and did also lost zone a Mirage Gate. Maybe it was just two Ooh. Mirage Gate off of that flower selecting. So now Isaiah is down to one Mirage Gate remaining in this game. And without getting a lot of value off of that previous one, we're just going to see Lost Impact take the knockout on Pidgeot EX. And it's on to Nathan to respond in this situation as Jigglypuff. Look at this matchup, Freya. We have Giratina V-Star, Lord of the Underworld, <laughs> versus a Balloon Pokemon. This reminds me a little bit of, do you remember all the way back in Cosmic Eclipse, there was a, sort of that advert where there was like the three baby Pokemon yes. going up against <laughs> Arcus de Algo and Palkia. This, this is it. This is like th that, that matchup, or well, at least a part of it, exactly. Maybe some trauma from uh, Jigglypuff's uh, early life as an Igglybuff, yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah. Uh, Jigglypuff is here as well. Does have that lead attack, so at worst could search for a supporter card, but I really don't think that's what you're necessarily looking for at this point. No, but definitely here not. Here we go. Going to see the Arvin get played, and Counter Catcher, it looks like, a card being eyed up towards the top of the deck. Now Nathan has to decide when is it correct to put this Jigglypuff into play and evolve it into Wigglytuff, and I think it will be at the same time that Nathan can find a missed energy, and with Quick Search not being online, it's going to be a little bit more difficult. Now, the Forest Seal Stone has not been used, and off of this Arvin, it looks like that may be what Nathan is looking to get. Yeah, and I guess the tricky thing here is going to be denying Isaiah a way to try and KO this uh, Pidgey because, of course, that Sableye is ready to go on the bench. It's good. There's nothing to Lost Zone. It all takes one Psychic Energy, and Lost Mine will be able to take a knockout here. So it's a, it, it is a little bit tricky because you, you put this Pidgey down, and you can't really put down the second one to, like, ensure against that. There goes the uh, the uh, Forest Seal Stone on the Rotom Beam. Yeah, Star let's, Requiem. Let's not forget about Mist Energy, Drink. and that can protect against that Lost Mine attack. Oh, that, right, yes, of course. prevent against all effects of attacks. But the problem here is you can only put Mist Energy onto one of these Pokemon. So maybe exactly. we're going to see something like that Hero's Cape come down onto the other Pokemon. That way, both of these Pokemon cannot be knocked out as well as this Ultra Ball, and I think it may be time for Wigglytuff EX to make its grand debut wow. on the stream. So, yeah, with the combination of the Mist Energy and the Hero's Cape, you essentially have that means of sort of banking both, right? You can uh, secure, secure both the Pidgey and the Wigglytuff against these knockouts. So, yeah, very, very important uh, play here from Nathan just to make sure that he has both the Pidgey and the Wigglytuff going for next turn. Yeah, Wigglytuff, do not be deceived. This is a monster. It may look cute, but it is going to be hard to get through this wall, especially with that expanding body ability. And now that all of these uh, stadium cards like Path of the Peak have rotated out, this card is really seeing a lot more play because that ability, as of right now, is almost always going to be on and active. We'll actually see okay. the Miss Energy on the active, and then we're actually just going to see an instant charge. And with this... The door is open for Isaiah, if he so chooses to, to knock this Pidgey out with a Lost Mine. However, Giratina V-Star is not an easy Pokemon to pivot out of the active, especially when Jet Energy as your uh, energy for turn means that you cannot attach the Psychic Energy to something like that Sableye. Yeah, that's true. Maybe that's why Nathan is okay, you know, leaving the, uh, the, the Pidgey a little bit more unguarded, because essentially if you force your opponent to do the Lost Mine, that already confers you an advantage in the fact that you're forcing your opponent to discard two more energy, it's uh, two more resources that are gone from them, and then they're going to have a harder time to finish off the rest of the game. So you almost make the, the Pidgey too tempting a target, but the actual real threat is the Wiggly Tuff that's right in front of you. So Isaiah will choose to just put this energy and this is the advantage of playing just the basic switch. Yes, it's tempting to play those switch cards. They can heal some Pokemon off, but they don't allow you to switch your Garatina V-Star out of the active spot. So there it is. 
Isaiah is now pivoted into this attacking strategy with Sableye, and that Lost Mine attack, since there are more than 10 cards in the Lost Zone, will allow it to place 12 damage counters wherever Isaiah wants, five instantly going onto the Pidgey, and the rest going onto Rotom, nice. sets it up with perfect math to be knocked out next turn oh, wow. by another Lost Mine attack. Okay, so no quick search option now for Nathan. There's a Sableye you know, doing Lost Mines all over the place, and now, uh, Nathan really needs to find a double turbo energy and just like knock out the Sableye, really, in, a, in an ideal world. Uh, oh, it is there in hand. It does have a double turbo energy. We're actually going to see Luminion V grab the penny. Nathan understands how important it is from this point on to make prize cards as hard as possible for Isaiah Bradner to access. And Penny is a great way to do that, picking up one of these basic Pokemon in play. That being the Rotom V. Luminion isn't a card we see included a lot in the, into this control deck. Usually Pidgeot can just find you the supporter card you need every turn. But Luminion, in cases where there's no Pidgeot in play, can find these key resources. And Wigglytuff is finally ready to friend tackle onto Isaiah's Pokemon. Yeah, it does do 90 damage and then 90 more if you play the support card from your hand during this turn, which Nathan, as we saw, just did with that Penny. So yeah, we'll be very easily able to take a look out on this Sableye. Uh, oh, 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 maybe not. Actually, no, gonna counter catch it and KO the Bennett instead. I like this a lot. Just get rid of that consistency. Now the Sableye has lost a lot more of its value. There's really no great Pokemon to play. We're just confirming all the damage is the same. Now Penny was played this turn to pick up the Rotom V. Just making sure everything is correct as Nathan yep. will take his first prize card of the game. A little bit late, but better late than never. Yeah. And uh, this is one of the great things about playing a control archetype more like this. It is quite different in the sense that, unlike other control archetypes where normally you have your six prizes and those are cards you can't access the rest of the game, Nathan absolutely can. He can take prizes, he can take knockouts. It might even be like the way that this control deck actually wins. You like, deny your opponent resources until you get to the point where you have this one huge wiggly tough that your opponent can't KO, and uh, then you just take all your six prizes and win. Now this turn was great for Nathan, but the big thing lacking is Lack of support, there's no Pidgeot EX in play, and we keep saying it over and over again because of how crucial it is to make sure you can play your supporter cards every turn that you need to in your specific scenarios. Now Isaiah, playing this last Colrus's experiment, we'll look at the top five cards, pick two, pick three to the hand, Lost Zone two, and does find that Temple of Sinnoh, oh. and that is a huge grab to have because Lost, or excuse me, Star Requiem can knock out this Wigglytuff because of this Temple of Sinnoh getting the effect of the Mist Energy removed. But I think Isaiah's just gonna play it cool for now, try and take one or two prize cards here, thanks to that Lost Mine, and then knock out one of these final Pokemon with that combination of Temple of Sinnoh plus Star Requiem. Well, there's three prizes left to take, right? So the easy prize app is to just maybe try and spread your damage in a way where you can KO either the Radiant Charizard or the Luminion, and then go ahead and finish off the Wigglytuff for the last two prizes. But no, actually, just going to go for it straight away. So now, with that Temple, with that temple of Sinnoh, that uh, Mist Energy is not going to be able to protect the Giratina, uh, no, protect the Wigglytuff from the Star Requiem, and that will take a one-hit knockout and uh, deal with this huge tank of a Pokemon. And even valuing putting that Banette back into the deck and putting one more energy onto this Giratina V-Star. Isaiah Bradner is so close to pushing himself over the finish line in this first game. Star Requiem can knock out this massive Pokemon, 350 HP as it stands, and take two prize cards. Isaiah will be just one prize away from this long, lengthy game one going his way. Yeah, and uh, Nathan, how he has been playing his absolute heart out, but this is the thing when you're playing against Lost Zone Giratina, it does have these options to try and deal with these control archetypes. And uh, right now, the Temple of Sinnoh, the one of Temple of Sinnoh coming in huge clutch to deal with this missed energy. Yeah, this is a situation where actually having the bravery charm on the Charizard could have been a big deal <laughs> if there was something like the Defiance Band. At Combustion Blast could have knocked out this Garatina V-Star. Now there is still a combination Ooh. of cards that does make something like this possible. If you had something like Penny and then another way to switch and the fire. But with not having Pidgeot EX into play, it seems like Nathan's options are slowly closing. Neither of these Pokemon can survive a lost impact attack. It doesn't even matter if you play something like a Mimikyu down because that will still just be knocked out. Nathan does hit a Super Rod, the final Super Rod left, but there are just all the pieces here. Jet Energy and Artisan means that you can pivot back into this Garatina V no matter what, and I think the options are running out for Nathan at this point. What can he do to keep himself in this first game? Well, knowing that uh, Isaiah has the pieces that he has and knowing that there's no way to disrupt the hand, I think at this point Nathan is basically stuck. I mean, there's... 
I think with the combination of the cards in both players' hands, I don't think there's actually any way for Nathan to deny Isaiah KO. So yeah, recognizing that, going to scoop up the cards, and uh, Isaiah's going to take game one. An absolute masterclass in how to not let something that's a little bit unorthodox or maybe surprising get the best of you, staying calm, staying collected, and taking that first game. Excellent play from Isaiah. Yeah, absolutely phenomenal stuff. And it is so, so important when you're up against uh, a archetype you don't recognize, especially control, to not lose your cool. You, know, you have a strategy that you know that works. Just go for that strategy. Make sure that you, know, you, you know, play your deck uh, in a slightly different way so that you don't you know, fall prey to the normal control traps. And that's exactly what Isaiah demonstrated there and was able to take game one because of it. Yeah, I mean, Isaiah had still plenty of options left at the end of that game. It was a little bit tough at the beginning because of having three of those energy cards prized, but I think Isaiah made the right play, going after that Pidgeot EX early. I think if Nathan has access to that, can maybe deny those final prize cards, keep his Wigglytuff up, but that's really the problem, is not only does Prime Catcher allow you to go aggressive after Pidgeot EX, but the Temple of Sinnoh allows you to also knock out the big wall that Nathan tried to set up. I wonder now, if with Nathan having information about Temple of Sinnoh being in Isaiah's deck, does he still try and go for this setting Wigglytuff strategy up, or does he maybe pivot to a different game plan? We'll have to see. Yeah, it's a, it's a little bit hard because I guess you can make a judgment call based on whether you think the Isaiah has access to the Temple of Sinnoh or not. I'm not sure if Nathan realizes how many Isaiah plays because we know that it's a one-off, but Nathan might not necessarily know that. So maybe that changes his thinking a little bit. Maybe he thinks going for the gamble is worth it if it, Isaiah can't find it. But just knowing that it's there and knowing that Isaiah can play patiently until he gets there makes it a little bit of a tricky uh, situation to evaluate. It is tough indeed. It is always important when you're playing against these decks that are trying long games to keep note of the clock. That was a 25 almost minute first game getting set up. As things stand, Isaiah is pretty much in an, a very solid spot. Will not lose fast games against this control deck. So I mean, even if Isaiah can just prolong the game to be almost as long as that first game was, I mean, Nathan was still at five prize cards at that spot, still needed to take multiple knockouts to get into a position, and that is a big card prize there for Nathan, that Wigglytuff oh, wow. is in the prize cards. And, it, and well, uh, I was about to say, he was doing heavy ball as well, of course, you can't get an evolution Pokemon out with that, but yeah, does, does Nathan play any way to get that Wigglytuff out of the prizes? I'm not sure he does. No, with, the, with Peonia rotating out of the standard yes, format, there indeed. is really only very, very few ways to access your prize cards. You can do some pretty weird things like Daisy at uh, Daisy and then Daisy's the guidance, I think, and then playing something like Arc Phone to then switch <laughs> the top card now that you know what your prizes are, but it really aren't just good options, and that's why Nathan isn't playing anything else. Hey, any Claw fans in stream? You guys ever seen this card before? <laughs> I know I haven't seen it on stream. Claw EX with that counter-attacking pincer ability. If it's in the active spot and it's damaged by an attack from the opponent's Pokemon, you discard an energy from the attacking Pokemon. A really solid good ability in a control deck. It can get there and it can get in there too. Falling Press does 100 base, and who likes a good coin flip for some more damage? So, I mean, with double Turbo Energy, you can cap out at 160. Come phase do not have resistance, so with the double turbo energy, they would still be knocked out from that falling press attack. Don't even need to flip heads. <laughs> you don't, know. And I mean, Isaiah is going to just put Artisan in place, so maybe this right. hand is just looking a little bit weak. That's pretty much a gift to Nathan at this point, a free invitation to just get a Pidgey down to play or one of those Jigglypuff. Yeah, I think the only other basic in Isaiah's hand currently is a Shuppet, which is a good one to have, but you want a little bit more than that. So maybe a second Comfe, maybe, uh, maybe a second Shuppet if you think you want to make use of the EX and uh, the non-EX uh, Bayonets. But um, going to be a second Comfe here, it looks like, just to really try and get the, you know, these early hand setups. Yeah, and I think with no Pidgey coming down in that first turn for Nathan, there is a solid line for Isaiah to go in and use Everlasting Darkness. However, there becomes a weird situation where Cloth is actually very useful because it can sit here, take the small amounts of damage, and then every time Isaiah is forced mm. to continuously discard Psychic Energy, and it really just doesn't become worth the trade-off for Isaiah, no. but he eventually has to just give up the item lock anyways. It, it, it is, in a sense, it's a pseudo answer to, uh, to Bayonet. So maybe, do you think there's a chance that Nathan was aware of the Bayonet threat and maybe include this as an option against that? Potentially, um, there's a lot of usage where cloth can be good, especially against decks that uh, only play certain energy. You also get to choose the energy you discard. Yeah, you so do. against some decks that only play a, a specifically small amount of a certain type of basic energy, you can just target after those and then use something like Aerie to discard their super rods. Could be an effective strategy. I'm sure Nathan had a very solid reason for including it this weekend. This seems like one of them potentially. Yeah, it really does. So Artson finds the second Comfe and uh, Asaya had a 
quick look at the, the Tour de Tech and uh, does done that quick prize evaluation. I'm sure very mindful of the time and uh, the fact that he was able to win game one, but uh, these games, as we mentioned already, do go on a, a, a bit of a long time. So just making sure that he strikes that balance right. Second flower selected coming in as a, oh, a little bit of a trickier decision there. Also of note, with that attachment to the active and the retreat, that does kind of give up the Everlasting Darkness this turn. And I think exactly like you mentioned, Ethan, not really worth going for if you're just gonna run into getting your energy discarded all the time. Yeah, this hand is really not looking too strong for Isaiah. Early on, Isaiah had access to lots of Colrus's experiment, continued to use Colrus over and over again every turn. Just had very, very good variants, especially with how limited the flower selecting was in terms of using it on a, uh, or rather on a limited basis, was lots of abyss seeking. So in this case, Isaiah may be getting a little bit of the back end in terms of consistency. We'll have to see what he can find potentially uh, off of flower selecting's next turn. And yeah, not even in the abyss seeking, already no. attached to the energy for turn and we'll just pass things over to Nathan. Luckily, Nathan not only has this artisan that Isaiah put into play, but it looks like a solid supporter on this first turn, or rather the second turn with Arvin. Yeah, yeah, Arvin, a uh, phenomenal supporter. So really a supporter that uh, when it first came out, didn't really see as much play, but really did sort of like came into its own, especially as more of these stage two and control uh, archetypes are developed. Of course, does let you search for any item and any tool card with the reclassification of uh, you know, tool cards into their own category. Arvin, one of the only ways to really uh, search tools nowadays, but yeah, an absolutely phenomenal supporter. So Nathan will now just check through the deck. It's important to note what cards are prized, and he will very quickly get the news that Wiggly Tough EX is in the prize card. So how will Nathan adjust his strategy knowing that it's not potentially a consistent option to find this game? Yeah, yeah, and especially, I mean, obviously Nathan can't notice, but it is right there at the top of the prizes as well. And given that Wiggly Tough is one of your main ways to take knockouts and table prizes in the first place, it's going to be a little bit tricky to get it. And so I think in this instance, Nathan's going to think, you know what, maybe I just abandon the Wiggly Tough strategy in this game. Uh, maybe I just, uh, you know, maybe we could keep, maybe we could just attack with his claw faction. I mean, double turbos in hand, or you can just like take a prize off of this come face straight away. So Arvin will be the supporter played for turn, and instantly you see how powerful Rotom V's instant charge is on the first couple of turns before you get Pidgeot set up and established. We'll see Nest Ball and I'm sure Forest Seal Stone will most likely be the item, or rather the tool card of choice. It will make things a little bit easier next turn, especially since Nathan already has that rare candy in the hand. Yeah, it makes Arvin such a powerful double combo, right? Because you, with the Arvin, you can find the Nest Ball for the Rotom V, which is then the target for the Forest Seal Stone, and then you put the Forest Seal Stone on the Rotom V, and then you have a, any card guaranteed. So yeah, Arvin just really a huge play enabler for that reason, just from like the chain, so the combinations of items and supporters that you can use to really search for any card in the deck that you want. Hold on, it looks like we're actually oh. going to see potentially Rotom V use that Forest Seal Stone this turn. Oh, I think Nathan's okay. maybe biggest concern is, can I afford to just leave one Pidgey in play? And Nathan may be a little bit scared of what will happen if he, again, does not get this Pidgeot EX established early on. We'll play that Buddy Buddy Poffin, thanks to Forest Seal Stone grabbing it out of the deck. Even with that Wigglytuff prize, Nathan wants that opportunity to eventually later on in the game establish that as an option. Yeah, wants to just make sure that the Pidgeot EX has as many opportunities as possible to get into play. Does find that Jigglypuff as well. Yeah, it does find the Jigglypuff as well, which is interesting. I mean, we did see that Nathan did take a note that Wigglytuff was in the prizes, maybe thinking, you know what, I still want to get the Jigglypuff down. Maybe I can take the Wigglytuff off the prizes eventually and then still evolve into it. But of course, we know what he doesn't know, which is that Wigglytuff is going to be quite hard to access. So a little bit unfortunate that uh, Nathan is going to have to spend some time making sure that this Jigglypuff just uh, doesn't get knocked out. So we'll see what Nathan wants to do. Now, Nathan does have a double turbo energy in hand, but I think just values using instant charge instead of getting ahead for no reason and taking prize cards. Though it can be good, though he knows he has a chance to take that Wigglytuff, it really just isn't worth the, rather the plus of just continuing to build your hand up and establishing Pidgeot EX potentially on the next turn. Yeah, so just going to give an instant charge there, and now it is back over to Isaiah to respond. Now, he was able to keep that one shepherd in place, so now there's the debate, right? Because you can uh, maybe evolve and uh, start locking off uh, Nathan's items, but as we already mentioned, that cloth is in the active. If you start you know, going for this uh, item uh, lock over and over again, your energy is going to keep getting discarded, and there are only five Psychic Engine in the deck. That is a higher count than normal for a uh, Lost and Giratina deck, mm -hmm. but you're going to run out eventually. Uh, you're only doing 30 damage at a time, and uh, that is a long, long time to take to KO this cloth, given that it has 220 HP. Isaiah's got to think about how he wants to navigate through this game, but, I mean, time is on his side. There's 18 minutes left. Nathan's game plan really requires 
lots of time, lots of resources being burned for Isaiah to keep up with potentially some smaller attacks that Nathan can put together. Of course, the Cloth can get in there and attack. Wigglytuff can. Even Pidgeot EX has an attack that can deal 100 damage after reduction from the double turbo energy. So Isaiah will get down this second Shuppet. Now has the option to evolve both of these into their useful tech evolution cards. Yeah. And let's not get it twisted, right? We with the two pit with the two Pidgey down, Nathan can feel pretty safe about uh, one of them becoming a Pidgeot EX because there are no water energy in this in, in these lists. Uh, Isaiah is playing a very similar list to John Eng that we saw yesterday. Mm. It is just psychic and grass. There is no water energy, there's no threat of a radiant Greninja, and with only two in the loss zone, there is no way that we're gonna see a stable like Lost Mine coming in this turn to take a double knockout. So yeah, uh, Nathan can be feel pretty confident about being safe to you know have a Pidgey to evolve into a Pidgeot next turn. Does have to loss in one of those Garatina V. We saw Isaiah really prioritizing getting a second Garatina V into play. That does evolve the Shuppet into the Banette. Does have that ability to bring supporter cards back, but there have been no supporters played yet for Isaiah this game. Just the one Psychic Energy in his discard pile and more Ooh. time granted to Nathan in this spot. Yeah, rough, rough hand. Uh, not, able, not able to find much from the digging from the flower selecting and still only freeing the loss zone. Not even enough to do a spit innocently with a cram around. Very rough going. And uh, meanwhile, by contrast, Nathan has all the resources ready to go. There's a double turbo. We're going to commit that now. And uh, I think we're going to start seeing some falling presses, Ethan. <laughs> I think Nathan understands this is a great time to just Use some attacks, put some pressure on, but I don't know if I agree with playing no. Iono. It's just a gift to Isaiah. Isaiah had really no supporter cards. You oh. knew his hand was weak. I think Nathan may have really just started to see that importance of getting Pidgeot EX into play, and while it is, it is definitely going to keep Isaiah in a lot better yeah. of a spot while you are attacking. Let's see what these six cards can bring. Potentially, there's a rare candy and a Pidgeot. But no. It's just an Arvin, and now I'm sure Nathan is just wondering, was it worth that trade-off? Was it worth giving my opponent a brand new hand of six when they have yet to play a supporter card so far this game? And it's so rough, right? Because this is the, the tricky thing with Iono. Sometimes you need to play it just to see more resources yourself, but then you just give your opponent a complete gift when you know that their hand isn't all that great. And especially even worse, when the your draws off your Iono are terrible, and then even after the instant charge, it's still not that great. I mean, you have an Arvin for next turn, which I guess is okay, but mm -hmm. really not, not a great turn from uh, Nathan here. Yeah, that would have been an instance where saving that Forest Seal Stone, not getting that second Pidgey, that really didn't matter the previous turn, would have guaranteed the Rare Candy Pidgeot, and then Nathan would have had a lot better of a line, wouldn't have been maybe tempted to play that Iono. And I think Isaiah's just thinking, what do I do in this position? Do I play the Chorus Experiment? Do I continue to dig through? And I mean, Isaiah's just gonna play that Chorus, start to finally build this Lost Zone up more. Wow, this is a tough, Five cards, you want access to all five of these. The boss's orders to Gust, you want these Mirage Gates to power your Pokemon up, but you also want more Colrus's Experiment and your Super Rod to bring energy back. Two cards have to go to the Lost Zone, and it looks like it may be one of those Switch, as well as that Mirage Gate. Yeah, you don't need as many Mirage Gates to like, take you through when you're playing up against these Control Archetypes, so get rid of uh, one in the early stage especially can be absolutely fine, because you don't want to get rid of too many of them, because eventually you do want to put that aggression on to make sure that you can take enough prizes in time to win. But although, given that you're one game up, game up as you are in a Zai situation, maybe not fearing that as much. Yeah, I mean, you never want to get rid of Grass Energy either, but it was that Temple of Sinnoh. Isaiah knows how important it is to keep that card around. And another choice where... Isaiah will actually value the Cramorant over potentially getting down another Garatina V onto play. And here we go now. Isaiah has unlocked more potential from this Lost Zone deck. There is a Mirage Gate. Here we and go. Isaiah is going to play it. We'll be able to get out this Psychic and Grass Energy. And the question now is where do these energy cards go? Yes. Do we see this go onto Banette? But, I mean, item locking is a good way to maybe buy yourself some time, but is it worth having that energy just get discarded back? And Isaiah prepping ahead, having oh. some more energy to play, but this just feels awkward because Nathan is the one who gets to choose the energy cards getting discarded. Will we maybe see something like a Poltergeist, potentially? I mean, there is yeah, a chance could. for a knockout, but would need to have a decent amount of item cards to knock out this Cloffy X. Is it, I thought Poltergeist was uh, all trainers, not just items. Oh, no, 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 I think you have Gengar, I guess, oh, the adult one. No, I'm fairly sure, like... I think it is all trainer cards, so we're yeah. going to see this uh, Bayonet EX go yeah. into play. Uh, the item block does this. Yeah, so he's yeah, trainer. It's That's all what I thought. trainers. Yeah. Wow, Isaiah is going to get in here and attack with Poltergeist. Knows that a majority of Nathan's deck is trainers playing almost 40 trainer cards in this deck. Going to knock this cloth out and then from there has the option to still use Everlasting Darkness in future turns. Yeah, and uh, 
And then now, of course, uh, the Mirage makes a lot more sense. Of course, uh, you you will still get that energy discarded, and it will be the Psychic, but you got the attack cost uh, there ready to go. And uh, yeah, you, you can feel pretty confident, given that Nathan's hand size, and as you mentioned, the amount of trainer that he plays, that it's going to be a knockout on this Glorf. Yeah, this board looks great, too. Of course, has the ability on that the net to always get a supporter back, draw more cards. And there it is, Polter, guys. Let's count the item cards. Are there enough in here? Five, there are six, more than seven, enough. Eight trainers and the Lux Ray. Uh, that's uh, 480 damage. That's that's a little bit of damage. Just just enough to knock out the cloth. Oh, it was definitely a close one. Quick maps. <laughs> yeah. That is quick. That is quick indeed. And yeah. Nathan will just discard that psychic energy. He does get to choose. And the grass energy, not great to have on the Banet, but we could just see Poltergeist be a great attack for Isaiah. Didn't use it a lot in game one, but even against something like Wigglytuff would be able to knock out oh, that big true. Pokemon yeah. later on. We'll just see the Jigglypuff come into the active spot and not having Wigglytuff here. It would not be able to knock out this Banette, but if it, the Banette is just able to fire off attacks over and over again, you're eventually not going to be able to keep up with attacking pressure, especially once it starts to hit 200, 300 plus damage. And it's so rough for Nathan as well, because because you don't really have an easy way to play a bunch of trainers in one turn. The whole point is you want to accumulate them in your hand so that you play the right one on any given turn, but you can't just play a bunch of easily to reduce the damage from Poltergeist. So if Isaiah can just find on the Psychic Energy, it might just be Poltergeist until the cows come home, and then uh, Isaiah's going to win this game too. Yeah, Aerie will be the supporter card for turn. Did find a Super Rod, and that's not a bad card to discard at all. Isaiah did have to get rid of that Psychic Energy thanks to the Cloth EX's ability. And now for Nathan, just doesn't really have oh. anything else to follow this up. We're just going to see it an instant charge, draw three cards, and maybe Isaiah is thinking, does Nathan maybe not have access to this Wigglytuff? Is it worth it for me to maybe use Everlasting Darkness to item block this Jigglypuff, or do I just continue to take prizes and push my aggression in this situation? Well, I mean, there is a Rotom V re there ready to go, right? Looking uh, ve sitting very, very pretty. So and you do, um, as I did, in fact, just draw the Prime Catcher for turn. So you could use that and uh, pivot into the Binet. <laughs> that is a crazy draw for a turn. Isaiah wasn't sitting on it. If Isaiah had that in hand before the top deck, it would have been discarded off that Aerie. So oh, right, an yeah. incredible top deck for Isaiah to find. Now... Let it be known there is a Cole versus Experiment, so could have found it off of that, but it is more better that it was not discarded with that supporter card rather than it is now in the hand. Isaiah's got lots of options. The clock is ticking down. He seems to be in a favorable spot in this round 11 match. Yeah, wow, a phenomenal top there there from Isaiah. And uh, I think that, oh, hold on a second. Can Isaiah get to 10 the Lost Zone and maybe do a Lost Mine and KO both the Pidgeys? Because that would be absolutely devastating. And then next turn, you can just finish things off by KOing the Rotom. It's pretty much guaranteed. Colrus' experiment can put you to 9, and then that Banette sends it to the Lost Zone, which increases right, your yes. count by 2. As long as there's a Psychic Energy, that Banette only has a 1 Retreat cost, so it's not super hefty. To, or it does have a 2 Retreat cost, excuse me. So it will take something like a Switch to get it out of the active spot. But there is a Psychic Energy from the Colrus' experiment. So that's piece number one. I say, let's just got to think about what other pieces do I prioritize in this situation. At this point, you don't really need Ultra Ball. You found nope. all the evolution Pokemon and that Iron Leaves. Yes, it's got a great ability to switch into the active spot but Isaiah's in a comfortable enough spot that he feels okay to put that into the Lost Zone. Yeah, and I think given that uh, there's no Mirage Gate in hand currently, so I think what you got to do at this point is, we did just see a Forest Seal Stone found. I think you just have to whack this on the Giratina V-Star, you know, use that Star Alchemy, and then you just, you know, find the Switch card, go into the Sableye, take a double knockout. I don't think you're too afraid of, you know, giving up the Star Requiem, given that you're so far ahead at this point, you don't really need that to okay. win. You could just take a kill on the Rotom for the last two prizes. Yeah, uh or do we have some kind of debate going on? We'll just figure out exactly yeah, yeah. what's yeah. happening in this situation. So we are just going to have action continue. We are at the point now where there are nine cards in the Lost Zone. Honestly, for Isaiah, you could also have just played the Prime Catcher this turn. Bring up something yeah. like the Rotom. It's kind of annoying to bring out of the active spot, and I think yeah, this true. is Isaiah's best line. Bring up the Rotom, and then use Lost Mine, and just knock out both of these Pidgey. That way, you know Nathan's not going to be able to set up this powerful line. It could be tempting to take the Jigglypuff out, but you save your V-Star power, and you can use that Star Requiem to take that final prize yeah. card. And uh, I, and here I was just talking about how you maybe need the Forest Steel Stone for the Switch, but you can just use the Prime Catcher instead. You pull double juicy over here, pulling out the Rotom preemptively, take a knockout onto the two Pidgeys, and now if if Nathan doesn't have a way to switch up this Rotom, then it's going to be a very easy uh, two-prize knockout to win next turn. Yeah, as long as Isaiah can use that final Mirage Gate to power up this Giratina V-Star, has not used the V-Star power, and is also putting that Forest Seal Stone, so a great choice between either just knocking a Pokemon out or finding any piece. 
Nathan has got to put something together. The time's winding down. His opponent's at two prize cards left, and there is no Pidgeot EX on his board. Yeah, and there's no great options here for Nathan, right? Because you need to pick up this Rotom, otherwise you, you know you're going to lose next turn. But it, if you pick that up and put something else down, then, you know, you're stuck anyway. And if this Jigglypuff gets carried very easily. So, yeah, going to go for this Radiant Charizard here. It's probably the best single prize that Nathan can put down at this point. Azaya has taken four prizes, so that uh, Radiant Charizard will only need one Fire Energy to attack. Excited Heart showing its true value. Charizard is roaring and ready to go. And does have the fire energy in hand. And the Defiance Band. Oh, that's Plus huge. the Counter Catcher. Is oh. this the combat that Nathan needs in this spot? Yes. We'll play the Penny. Put this Rotom up into the hand. Fire energy. Defiance Band. And the Counter Catcher to bring up Giratina V-Star. And with Isaiah not having another Giratina V in play, it means that this Charizard is, for the time being, relatively safe, and more importantly, there will be no Star Requiem, and Isaiah will potentially have to establish another Giratina V-Star in the upcoming turns. This, that was about as perfect a response as Nathan could have asked for, just being able to kill the Giratina V-Star, and they leave no two prizes on board, so it means that Isaiah has no way of guaranteed winning this turn. Maybe maybe if Isaiah was playing Water Energy, you could go for like a Moonlight Shuriken here, take a double knockout with that with Water Weakness on the Charizard, but that is not an option here for Isaiah. Yeah, it's weird. I'm thinking if there's ever a better line to... Knock out the Banette. I mean, the Banette at this point pretty much will always read knock out your opponent's active Pokemon because yeah. of how many trainer cards Nathan has. I mean, yeah, getting rid of Star Requiem and the Alchemy is probably still a better trade-off, but these are things you've always got to be thinking about. Isaiah, with having both of those attacking threats, the Banette and the Garatina V-Star, means that there are always options. There are always choices, and... Isaiah is down a few energy cards. We did, of course, see the energy on the Sableye. There's one energy in the Lost Zone, and I believe there may actually still be an energy in the prize cards, but Isaiah does have this Psychic Energy, and I think is still in a very, very solid spot. Yeah, because I, mean, yeah. I mean, you can just KO the Jigglypuff here and then put the rest on the Charizard, and then there is, it, it, it would need another you know, Penny plus some, something else, but then at that point, is I can just bring up the Bennett and then you know, take a KO with the Portal guys. So mm -hmm. it was a really great combat play from Nathan, but let's admit that made a mistake. Nathan's back is still very much against the wall here. Yeah, let's not forget as well that Charizard using that Combustion Blast cannot attack the following turn. No, so exactly. Regardless of what gets put into play, whether the Charizard is damaged or not, a Penny will need to be played if it wants to attack again. I think Isaiah knows what he needs to do in this position, even benching the Cranbrant into play. and. But the way this Lost Mine works, it will set up for knockouts on several different lines. The energy on the Banette, the Cramorant down into play, and the Sableye. It feels like there are too many options Isaiah is throwing at Nathan for him to respond. Yeah, so Lost Mine, five onto the Jigglypuff for a KO, and then the rest onto the Charizard, and then back over to Nathan. What does he draw? It is a Super Rod. And I think Nathan understands there's really no coming back to this. Going to take one final look, think, is there any way for me to come back? Is there any line that makes sense? Can I stall something in the active spot? Can I maybe buy myself some turns, eventually get this Charizard back into play? But it seems like it would just require too much, too many options, and he does not have the answers. Isaiah Bradner wins the set, advancing to 10-0-2, or 9-0-2, excuse me, but doing it in incredible fashion, keeping up his undefeated record, and getting one step closer to that top cut. A phenomenal performance from Isaiah Brandon showing how to pilot the Giratina V-Star deck to its absolute maximum strength. Huge congratulations to him and, and commiserations as well on a, just a very, very, very well played set. Yeah, Giratina has historically had a very favorable matchup into these control archetypes and to having answers. It's one of the decks that plays probably the most switching outs and of course having the ability to no longer have your jet energies or stadium cards be discarded by. Like you mentioned, that Sydney that rotated out means that you have answers to the switching cards and Nathan had to take this approach where he just tried to try and take knockouts and set up these big Pokemon. And really in this game one, Isaiah was able to put early pressure on, take a knockout onto this Pidgeot, and Nathan's deck slowly started to crumble a little bit, especially when the Pidgeot was offline, and especially when Nathan got the bad news that Isaiah Bradner played that Temple of Sinnoh to shut off the missed energy on this weekly top. Yeah, that was really the, the key moment in game one. We saw that, uh, you know, Nathan thought maybe it would have been a little bit safer the missed energy down the weekly top, but uh, as uh, putting down that Temple of Sinnoh and just uh, and, and taking the KO with the Star Requiem, and then Nathan couldn't really come back from that. No, Isaiah managed his resources very, very well. You saw 
didn't really get stuck in any options. Nathan, I'm sure, thinking through the entire game, what can I do to really give myself an edge? And Isaiah knew being in the driver's seat that you cannot give any sort of control to your opponent. Did it excellently, and I really have to think back to that turn where Nathan decided to play the Iono instead of allowing Isaiah to continue playing with his weak hand. Maybe really just wanted to establish that Pidgeot, but especially when he missed those cards off of the Iono, things just really started to go pretty poor for him. Yeah, and especially after that, you know, lost mine, carrying both the Pidgeys, Nathan not able to find the Pidgeot, not even a matter of, you know, there being prize or anything like that, just not able to find them, even with that double Pidgey setup uh, before uh, Isaiah was able to come in with a lost mine, KO both of them, and just really leave Nathan with nothing. An amazing attempt at a comeback play here from Nathan. We did see that really huge knockout on the Giratina V-Star with the, Di with the Defiance Band, but then Isaiah able to just, you know, Leave this uh, Charizard in the active, take a KO on the bench at Jigglypuff with the Lost Mine, and then uh, Nathan realizing there was nothing else to be done, and that was all she wrote. Yeah, Isaiah, sure, every match he wins is just telling himself, come on, one more, one more match. It's finally my time. We saw John Eng, who was a testing partner and still is a testing partner with Isaiah, finally get his big win. I know Isaiah said somewhere that the boys, referring to his group, when they win, it feels like I win as well. Yeah. We saw Reagan get a win last season. We saw John get a win this season. And Isaiah feels like one of the last people in that group that finally needs a big win. It feels like him and Rahul are the last people who need to get that win, and then that whole group will finally have a big title under their belt. And that's where the team spirit comes in, right? We talked yesterday about how Pokemon, at the end of the day, or the trading card game specifically, is an individual game. You know, you go into the match all by yourself. You have your team behind you, but when you're there in that in that match, it is just you. But even then, you know, when you win, your teammates feel it too, because even though you're the one playing, you feel all the work that you put in together. 